David Brewster here with a new episode of Scales and Tails, and this is the Snake Charmer, a Phrygian dominant warm up. And this is actually one of my kind of private or secret you know, warm ups I like to use, and uh, I've had it for quite a while. And there's actually a lot of warm ups and exercises I like to play around with, you know, kind of focusing and honing in on different parts of my technique. It could be picking or fretting, legato, string skipping, tapping, you know, it could be chord based, scale based, arpeggio based. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can tackle, you know, exercises and warm ups on the guitar. And this idea, I just kind of stumbled upon it. I don't remember exactly what I was doing or where it came from. One day I didn't have it, the next day I did. And then I just started kind of playing with it. I kind of liked it. And it has a melody. It also has kind of a flow or a rhythm or a groove. We're also going to use a metronome. No way, we're using a metronome. But that's going to kind of help us lock in to that time and that groove. And... Uh, it's definitely demanding. It's not really so much a picking thing. We're kind of doing like this lazy kind of strum picking kind of motion. It's a fret hand thing. We're going to be using all of your fret hand fingers. We're going to be moving around the fretboard. And once we get started, you know, at first you might be like, what is this? But then once we get going, you'll see what it is. And once you get that melody in your head and you start playing with it, it is kind of addictive. It's one of those things that's kind of fun to just sit around and play. So anyway, here we go. To get started here, basically we have to locate the scale we're using. So this entire episode is going to be in G Phrygian Dominant. And Phrygian Dominant is a mode from the harmonic minor scale. And recently, it was earlier this year, it was in June and July, I attacked the modes from the major scale head on. And I created episodes stepping you know, our way through all the modes from the major scale. After that series of lessons, I've had tons of requests to hit harmonic minor and also melodic minor and other modes too. So this is kind of a primer or a sneak peek as far as what we're getting ready to tap into because I am about to start, you know, developing these harmonic minor based, you know, modal lessons. So this is really just something extra I'm throwing in here. But you could go back and actually watch the harmonic minor scale episode I made in October during Metal Month. And that would kind of help you, you know, kind of get that harmonic minor scale into your fingers and in your head. So for this, we're playing G Phrygian Dominant. And G Phrygian dominant is basically the fifth mode of C harmonic minor. So G Phrygian dominant's right here. Right, that's uh, G A flat B C D E flat F and then G again. That very distinct, you know, flat flat two or flat nine, you know, that A flat, and then that raised third, that B natural a big space you know between those two notes and then it's going to feel like natural minor right there c d and e flat and then f to g so there's our scale g phrygian dominant which comes from harmonic minor you know there's c harmonic minor right there showing the breakdown of G Phrygian dominant. All right, so there was our scale, G Phrygian dominant. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play through the snake charmer exercise. And I'm just gonna play through the whole thing using the metronome. The metronome is gonna be set at 63 beats per minute, which is relatively slow, but that's gonna help me kind of lock into the time and kind of reveal this groove that this you know, melodic idea has. And I would recommend play it slow. This isn't really a shredding thing. It's more of an articulation and fretting thing instead of shredding. So you want to play it, you know, kind of comfortable tempo. Don't make any mistakes. If you make a mistake, you have to start all the way back at the beginning again. And just play it, you know, where it sounds like music. You know, kind of make it like almost like a riff instead of just an exercise. You know, something like this.
played that exercise relatively slow, I'm going to walk through what's going on. And you may notice I'm actually playing or picking kind of partial strumming the G and the B string together pretty much throughout this exercise like this. Right. So the open G is our root note, right? Because it's G Phrygian dominant. So we've got this droning root throughout the entire thing. And then we're fretting, you know, notes from the scale on the B string together. And it actually starts with a hammer on right there between that C and D. And then another hammer on to that D to E flat like that. Uh, strings and then occasionally I'm just playing the B string by itself. It's usually when you hear the note doubled. The second time it's just the single you know string instead of the double uh, hit like this. You kind of hear that. You kind of hear that doubled note even though it's you know two strings the first time and a single string the second time. But there's the first part of the melody. Start with those two hammer-ons. Right there we're shifting into that uh, D, grabbing, uh, and going up to that F eventually. stretchy move where we're going from uh, D to E flat and then reach up and grab that G with the open G string. So right there the first you know melody was played twice and then that kind of stretchy shift is played four times like this. middle area right here so this is like the first you know half but it's a different melody with different notes like this So we're doing the first melody, but up here. And right here is the stretchy shift, but it's an octave higher. basically uh, the snake charmer exercise. So that was basically the breakdown of the entire exercise and as you can see we're using all of your fret hand fingers, we're moving and kind of gliding along uh, that B string 
and we're stretching, we're using, you know, a little bit of legato, occasionally a hammer on or a pull off. You know, the picking really isn't, uh, I mean, it's beneficial, but it's not really a picking exercise. You're just kind of doing that kind of rhythmic strumming kind of motion. But uh, you may discover that there are some things going on. They're stretching, using the fret hand fingers, position shifting, you're thinking about that scale, you're thinking about the notes you're playing, and then you're also creating that melody, you know, and you don't want to lose or drop that melody. And then I'm just going to play through the whole thing one more time, like this. That's going to wrap this episode of Scales and Tails with the Snake Charmer, the Phrygian Dominant Warm-Up. And now that I've shared this idea and kind of exposed, you know, what I was doing here, uh, now it's up to you. I mean, you could definitely change keys. You could change to other tonalities and scales. You could convert it into harmonic minor or lydian or something. Um, and just experiment and see what happens. You could try it on different string groups. Even though I do like that G and B, you know, action, you could try it on different strings. And then just the benefit of using all your fret hand fingers, we're stretching, we're using some hammer-ons or some pull-offs, you know, a little bit of legato, a little bit of picking, that kind of strum-picked kind of motion or whatever. But you're basically moving around the fretboard, changing positions, you're thinking about the notes that you're playing, the scale that you're playing on the fretboard, noticing, you know, like how far you're stretching or shifting, you know, for certain, certain moves within that scale. So it's definitely a great exercise. And very different. You know, it doesn't have that strange symmetrical twilight zone kind of sound like a lot of exercises or warm-ups have. It actually sounds like music, you know, which is what you should be, you know, practicing and warming up and exercising your hands to do. You know, um, sometimes those really obnoxious and strange sounding exercises, you know, they have benefit. And there's definitely, you know, a need to practice, you know, some of those ideas. But I think exercises and warm-ups like this, where it's musical, it's melodic, it's rhythmic, you know, it's kind of steering your fingers and your brain and everything to playing actual music. That's really important. And plus, it's kind of fun. It sounds good, too. It sounds great on acoustic guitar, by the way. But anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.